Contrary to the media portrayal of the typical computer nerd, a slanky white boy who is not particular about the clothes he wears or the food he eats, there are other narratives that are just as important, like that of Lusanda Vilane, a 22-year-old black girl hailing from Eswatini. I'm a certified city girl and a proud computer science honor student at the University of Cape Town, the best university in Africa. Contrary again to the typical Africans upbringing rooted in poverty and strenuous living, I had, I had a pretty comfortable childhood. I fell in love with tech through the good old-fashioned way that is receptive of black joy and critical of the microaggressions that exist within the tech industry. Let us take a walk down the memory lane of Lusanda Villane. In 2004, in my grade zero, I had my first encounter with computers. From that day, I decided that computers and French were my favorite classes. French only because it happened in the computer lab. Around the same time, my parents bought our family a personal computer and I was inseparable from that machine. Any chore that I had to do that could be done near the computer was literally done near the computer. And that included taking care of my younger siblings. Throughout primary school and high school, my love for tech grew with each year. My teachers and parents noticed this passion and supported me tremendously. My parents made sure, made sure to keep our computer software up to date, connect our computer to the internet, and install typing games for me and my siblings to play. I've always had the goal of typing as fast as my father. I'm glad to say I type faster than him now. My teachers also noticed this passion and nudged me and encouraged me to explore everything there was to explore about the tech industry. Through my high school teachers, I met code and immediately fell in love. Throughout this period of my life, I was oblivious to my gender, nationality, race, or personality traits, and especially how they would affect my love for tech. I was not prepared for the change in environment from school to university. First of all, I do not fit the stereotype of what a typical woman in tech looks like, behaves like, or acts like. Apart from tech, I am thoroughly passionate about cooking and fashion. Quite naturally, I care about the way my clothes fit, the way my colors match, and I really like getting my nails done. These personality interests of mine were met with questions and comments from my peers and other people in tech, asking me questions such as, how do you find time to play dress up and code at the same time? Actually, you know, you really don't look like a woman in tech. Are you sure you're a woman in tech? And how, how do you code with those nails? These questions seemed very innocent for me at first. However, the more I encountered them, the question I felt I was being asked was whether my personality and other interests stood in the way of my abilities to pursue my career in Chester Pierce defines microaggressions as sudden, stunning, often automatic, verbal and nonverbal encounters that are put down to the offended by the offenders. In a work setting or university setting, microaggressions are questions and comments aimed at minority groups that antagonize their abilities based on characteristics such as nationality, gender, race and other characteristics. I had my first brush with microaggressions on the basis of gender in a group setting. In this particular group, I was the only woman in the group. My other group members were male and they were a mix of white men and black men. During our group discussions and distribution of our group work, I was assigned the role of writing our group report and writing and recording our group meetings. My male counterparts divided the work of coding amongst themselves. When I questioned why I was given this particular role, the answer I received was women write better. However complimentary this sounded, it also insinuated that men made better coders. A classmate of mine, a black woman, had her brush with microaggressions on the basis of gender when she came out top in her computer science class and after receiving the award, one of her male counterparts told her that the only reason she received the award was because empowering black women was the new trend, totally discrediting her abilities. In their research paper about black women in STEM, Ebony McGee and Lydia Bentley state that chronic encounters with microaggressions can lead to battle fatigue, and the battle fatigue can lead to women questioning their commitment to pursuing STEM, STEM major careers. True to this, I started questioning whether I was going to go the long mile in tech and whether the love that I had built for the past 12 years in tech was actually true. At some point, I even considered changing majors. In another group work setting, I, was, I, I had my first encounter with microaggressions on the basis of race. In this particular group, I was the only black student 
and my other group members were a mix of white men and white women. During our group discussions, I noticed that our group leader, a white man, would flat out ignore my points or repeat my points as his own original ideas. When I further sat back to observe the situation, I realized that my white women counterparts were not being treated the same. If anything, they were given the platform to state their points and acknowledged for their work. In their research paper about the racial climate and microaggressions in STEM, Megan Lee and co-authors state that when students of color perceive a negative racial climate, persistence and retention rates fall. I've, I was one of these students. The more I experienced a negative racial climate within my group work and the campus climate, I found my, myself losing interest in those particular projects and not giving as much creativity as I would have intended to. Megan Lee and co-authors continue to state that the racial climate, as informed by experiences with microaggressions, serves as a significant contributing factor to the low number of students of color in STEM majors. Needless to say, a community that normalizes such questions, comments towards those of us who do not fit the hierarchical tech stereotype manifests in psychological problems too. The isolation, feeling lonely, and imposter syndrome are a few of the many monsters that I had to grapple with every time I experienced microaggressions. These monsters were further reinforced in my head by the lack of black women in my computer science classes. Not always lost, however. I found myself a tribe of strong, supportive women in the Women in Computer Science Society, a society that exists in multiple major campuses around the world, but was formed in 2014 at UCT by women in computer science who felt as lonely in their journey as I did. Through the help of the society and its members, I was able to regain my passion for computers and I also found myself pioneering the Teach a High School Girl How to Code program, a program in which we have taught over 100 girls in our, in our local community high school how to code. Our aim for this program was to have as many black girls know that STEM careers were a possible career path for me. I further went on to complete an internship at a large tech company where I found a positive racial climate. I found myself thoroughly enjoying and engaging with the work because the environment felt very much like that which I had growing up. It was also really good to know that I had gotten, I had gotten into the internship program solely through merit. Although my positive experiences managed to rescue me from the plight of my negative experiences, that should not be the expectation of black women who come after me. The legacy of black women in tech should accentuate black joy, be receptive of women, provide resources and affirmative spaces. We can achieve this legacy by proactively unlearning and learning about the role each of us plays in creating the environment around black women in tech. That is the legacy that will succeed our predecessors like, Gra like Grace Hopper. That is the legacy that will make the Lusanda Villanas of this world comfortable in their use of tech and make sure that their use of tech is one that innovates and creates.